even though it's not my first monthly income report, it is going to be my first YouTube income report. So this one is going to be for June. And then um, we're going to do July, August, September. I'm going to do three things. One, I'm going to tell you where I work, kind of the hours that I work, and then anything that was weird for that month. Um, number two, I'm going to kind of give you a pearl of wisdom or something that helped me um, that month in class, or maybe a thought process. And three, I'm going to talk about um, you know, what I learned. Um, I've been teaching for a really long time. I have been online teaching for about 700 days. I hope that this is helpful for you. I also hope that for me and for everybody else, we'll be able to kind of look back on these videos a year from now or a year from June and say, oh, this is what happened or Oh, I, I know that you know Chinese New Year could be a problem or oh during this month I really did not think I was going to work so much but there was tons of classes so let's get started it was kind of a special month for me I had been planning a vacation um, for six months um, my boyfriend teaches uh, mathematics at a university that is small in our state and um, also works for a larger university and so gets the opportunity to go and teach mathematics in China. He goes, well, it keeps growing. So the first year it was four months or four weeks. The second year it was five and a half weeks. Um, this year it was almost seven and a half weeks. So um, he will spend time in China um, teaching at a university in Guangzhou. So this year, uh, I decided that I was not going to stay home and uh, kind of pine for him. So I decided to go to Europe for two months. And when he flew back, instead of flying back to the US, he flew back to uh, Europe and met me and we spent three, three weeks, three and a half weeks together in Europe. So. I already knew that my schedule in June was going to be weird, um, but I didn't think it was going to turn out the way that it did. So here is my income report. <laughs> and as you can see, it was not good. Um, $363 is basically what I made um, the first, second, or third month of working um, online. So. Let's just say it was difficult. Um, I am used to making roughly around $3,000 a month. Uh, so it was incredibly difficult. And uh, it really taught me a lot about myself and about um, my fears. And um, it actually really helped me in the end. So let me tell you what I thought was going to happen. So what I thought was going to happen is I would notify all of my students um, I would uh, tell them that I was not going to be available for pretty much a week um, while I got settled. I had already, I was going to be there for two months, one month in Spain and one month in Italy. I had already gotten Airbnbs for both of them. Both of the Airbnbs came back with some beautiful uh, speed tests, so I was really happy about that. Um, and the money was right, everything was good. So I got to Spain. Um, it turned into kind of a really dodgy situation. Airbnb actually sided with me and gave me all of my money back um, and even offered to find me another place. But I chose not to, um, to go through Airbnb. Uh, the internet was not what it was supposed to be. Um, the host was actually supposed to be there for the whole month. She was never there. Um, and then they started to allow other people to come in like their friends um, and stay at the house even though there were no locks on my door. I was really freaking out. The internet was really bad and I actually got my first ever teacher IT. Um, I didn't know it. I was teaching and I taught all the way through but um, 
all of a sudden it, I didn't get paid and I actually got money deducted from my account because that is VIP's rule. So I noticed it, I emailed back and forth and I was like, I didn't see anything going wrong. They sent me my ping record of like where my ping and where uh, my download speeds and my upload speeds were. And sure enough, um, at the time when the, the pings were really super high, I went back and looked at the video and sure enough, the student was not verbal enough, but he was kind of like looking around, like looking for his mom. Um, he was trying to tell me, but I just, I guess I didn't see it. So um, I knew that I couldn't teach there. So this $363 is actually, a lot of it is from Cambly. So I teach three different companies. Um, actually, I have four different kind of, hmm, I don't know what I want to call it like four pieces of patchwork that I quilt together and make my blanket of security. Um, I use Cambly. Cambly is an adult uh, ESL platform. It's very conversational most of the time and it's 24 hours a day. It's based in America, in San Francisco, and um, they are really good actually. The problem is, is that it's a cheap uh, per hour fee and actually it's not per hour, it's per minute. So. I think it's maybe 16 cents or 18 cents per minute that you talk. Uh, so if you don't get someone to talk to you, uh, you don't you don't get paid. So you could just be sitting around. So that's one thing. And I noticed that Cambly, $74, I was actually able to maintain my Cambly uh, upload and download speed if I was plugged into the Ethernet. Uh, what I found out later is Spain does throttling, which means that at certain times of the day, when it is really, really popular, like during the lunch hour, um, they slow down the speeds. And so no matter if I was hooked up to Ethernet or not, it didn't matter. Um, I just wasn't getting enough speed. But because I was using Cambly off of these throttled hours, I was doing fine. So I got $74 with that. Say ABC, by that time, I had already given up my homerooms because they started to get really tricky about you must have Ethernet connection. And they were also, you know, I couldn't take one day off to fly. And I also couldn't feel secure enough to know that I was going to have internet, that I didn't want to shortchange those students. So I just started to um, decline the renewal of my homerooms. A lot of other things were going on with the ABC that I didn't really necessarily agree and it was a good choice for me in um, the long run because the things that are do they're doing right now I don't really feel comfortable with and I probably wouldn't want to teach with them but I still do sign my contract uh, if they offer it to me so currently I am contracted with them uh, I think my contract expires in a couple of months so Cambly $74 Say ABC, zero. <laughs> VIP Kid was $289, but I got my first ever referral. So I actually got a referral fee of $100. And I taught a trial and someone converted. So it was $5. So $105 of the $289 was something that it wasn't classes that I was teaching. So I think I taught something like 20 classes in the whole month. I usually teach about 12 to 14 classes a day. So you cannot imagine how stressed I was. But <laughs> pearls of wisdom. Um, as soon as Airbnb released me and told me that they were gonna refund my money, I immediately kind of like just started thinking in my head. For the first probably five to six hours, I was freaking out. I had no idea what I was gonna do because I was like, oh my God. Now, granted, I had already saved money. I had already thought of this. I was not like paycheck to paycheck and stuck in Europe. But I was like, crap, what happens if something else happens? And I start to use the money that I had as a cushion. What happened if Airbnb did not give me the money back? You know, that would have been a whole month fee. And then I have to still purchase a whole mo another month. So I was kind of freaking out. Fast forward about eight hours, a uh, good sleep, and a talk with my boyfriend in China. 
and I decided that this was going to be a vacation. For the next three and a half weeks, I was gonna go wherever I wanted to in Spain, and I was gonna stay as long as I wanted to, and that was it. And I have to say, it was the most liberating thing to know that I could just go anywhere and do anything and stay for as long as I wanted. Um, and I was super, super happy about it. So it taught me some things about myself, how I didn't necessarily need to always be teaching every single day, but it also taught me that even though I kind of was not able to communicate with my students. They didn't see me for almost five weeks, four weeks for some of them. And yet, when I started to open up classes, when I had reliable internet, oh, you can hear my dog, uh, I immediately got booked. So that was one of my biggest fears. My biggest fear was I need to get to Europe as soon as, as, soon as possible I need to like go, 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 teach all my classes, run to the airport, uh, you know, try to sleep overnight, find my internet as soon as possible, as soon as I get to Europe, start teaching the classes as soon as I can because, oh my God, I'm going to lose them. And it just didn't happen. And so that was really reassuring to me. Not that I really was like, oh, my students love me, but I just was concerned that People would forget, or they would go to another teacher. Um, they would be booked for weeks out, out, you know, and that they just wouldn't um, book. So I was really happy for that. My Cambly students were also very, very, you know, they're all adults, so they're very, very um, supportive of me, and that helped out a lot. So all in all, <laughs> this month sucked financially, but. It taught me a lot about myself and about how I was feeling about um, the insecurity of, and I put that in air brackets, the insecurity of ESL t teaching. Um, it was the first time that I was like, you idiot, you're not working at two companies. Why are you doing this? You know, you need to make money, that kind of thing. So. I rebounded, I went to the south of Spain, I had the best time. I got bored of Spain after a while and decided to fly to Italy early. I was able to go to Bologna and to uh, Florence um, before I went to Genoa and stayed for another month um, with my man. I, we, I loved Florence so much even though I was only there for two days during the heat wave, it was so hot. Um, but I loved it so much and I showed pictures to my man that in March we're deciding to go back. So it all came out okay. Um, and it definitely taught me a lot about how I feel. Um, about my teaching ability, about the stability, about the flexibility, um, about a lot of things. About my insecurities, about how I didn't think that maybe... I thought people would forget about me and parents would be pissed. And um, yeah, so I was in, now looking back, really happy. Um, I'm also really happy how I handled the situation. I am not a really high anxiety person, but when I'm tired and more than a couple of things have gone wrong, I had the student IT, I had the Airbnb nightmares, I was not being supported, right? I didn't have my man with me. It was difficult to kind of get a hold of him because of the time change. He was at you know the university teaching and he knew that this was all going on, but it's still really frustrating. Um, I tend to like shut down and be like, this stuff sucks. So I really felt good that by the next day, I was like, you know what? We're gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. And also with my boyfriend's support of like, you need to take a vacation. You work seven days a week, most of the month, take a vacation. So with that support, it was so much easier to do what I did. So this is what, that's what I learned. This is what my, um, my money is from. And um, this is why, this is what I, I, I took from this month. So my pearl of wisdom or my nugget of wisdom or whatever you want to call it um, for this month in June is are these. 
do, 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 do. I, <laughs> I wear glasses. Uh, they are completely fake. Do, 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 do. Uh, I got them from the dollar store. I uh, they were sunglasses. I just literally popped out the um, lenses and I wear these. The reason why I wear them first is um, in the morning when I'm exhausted. Um, my eyes, the bags are really bad, and I noticed that if I put a lot of uh, makeup on them, that it just cakes and it just looks really bad. I start to have skin issues, like you're noticing some skin issues. And um, so that was one thing. So I noticed that if I just covered up my, you know, like darkened my eyebrows and maybe put an eyeliner on, and sometimes we should do like a makeup one. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like how fast can you get your face on? Um, I don't wear makeup on a regular daily basis. So literally I, I use blush and then I would go like this <laughs> and do this and do this and then put lipstick on and then that was it. So these have been really helpful to me to make my face look more animated um, because I can like really put my brow down or really put my brow up. I know a lot of people are using the blue lens uh, glasses because they're looking at the screens and maybe they're um, you know working overnights and I could totally see that too as well but um, now I also notice students who are grabbing their glasses so they might be like this and I will do this do you have glasses and they'll be like oh oh yeah 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 because you know if I don't know if you've seen this but the Chinese students, if they do this, their mom will like push them back. And some of them actually have a bar so that they don't like strain their eyes. That's what it's for. So they don't like, you know, hunch over and they're not looking at you. So these are my nuggets of the day for sure. One dollar. Um, I have a couple of them. They're very, very light. So um, if they, you know, I can... I can bend them and put them in with my travel stuff and it just helps me have something on my face in the morning so that I don't have to like look bare white. It also helps with the contrast. Some companies, um, I noticed this a lot with Say and then when I would go to VIP, the lighting is drastically different. So I would teach one class at Say ABC and then go and teach a VIP kid class and then come back and teach a Say class. And I would have the same lighting, but I was really, really dark in um, the Say ABC. So I would put a selfie light on and then I would just kind of like blanch out. Everything was blanched. So it was all like white. I had no definition of my eyes. And when I put my glasses on, sure enough, I would have definition. So I also think that I might change my profile picture to glasses because I think psychologically that Chinese uh, parents think that teachers with glasses are smarter. I don't know. <laughs> it might be a possibility that that might happen. So we will see how that helps. Um, so. That's it. This is the income report. If you have any questions um, about how I work, where I work, what times I work, um, geez, anything, how I travel, where I travel, which Airbnb, whatever it is, um, please let me know. I appreciate you listening and watching this. Um, it is so cool to see people who are interested in how much I'm making. And I also hope that I can like motivate some people. Um, there are a lot of people that still think like VIP and say ABC and all online ESL companies in general are like big scams and they're gonna, you're gonna give them their social, your social security number and they're just gonna like somehow like steal your whole identity and it's not a real job, you're gonna work and work and work and they're not gonna pay you. Um, first of all, I've never heard of that before, um, but I understand <laughs> because there's all of those work at home for, make $2,000 and work at home, but you really can do it. So please do me a favor 
and like this video. Maybe even write a comment about what you liked and what you didn't like so I can include that in the video. Maybe something that was missing that you would like to know. And uh, please subscribe. Uh, go to my website. Sign up for my email list. Um, all kinds of stuff we have. Um, I will see you soon.